Michael Andretti out as owner at Andretti Global. Kansas Speedway gets a new start finish line after what happened back in the spring. Plus, I rank all of the remaining NASCAR Cup Series championship contenders. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. IndyCar silly season just doesn't stop apparently, and it's got more drama than any of the other major motorsports. I mean, we started off with Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan getting raided by the FBI. McLaren has a revolving door on their seats over there. Ed Carpenter Racing brings on a new investor, plus signs Alexander Rossi. Uh, Foyt has two new drivers. We have the Shank announcement. And now we find out that Michael Andretti has relinquished his ownership of Andretti Global, according to Sportico. It is worth noting that Sportico is a Penske-owned media company, but it does sound like they are correct on this one, and you have to assume they would be. They cover more of the sports business side of things, uh, but the team essentially confirmed it to Jennifer Iyer at the AP as well as others by putting out a statement. But according to the Sportico report, Michael Andretti wanted to transition out of his operational role into more of a strategic position within the organization. Which is interesting, right? What is he, the Bob of Bob and Tom? You can keep using my name, but I don't really want to do all the work anymore, which is understandable. Dude's been at it for a long time. The team did put out a statement. Jenna Fryer from the Associated Press is the first one that I saw post it, so I would just credit her with that here. But the statement does read, Michael's goal has been to transition to a more strategic role with Andretti Global and focus less on the operational side of the race team. Michael and Dan Towers have been working closely on developing this new structure, one which Michael is excited to see take shape under Dan's guidance. Michael remains engaged and will continue to serve as a strategic advisor and a key ambassador. We will have more to, sh to share in the coming weeks after Michael and Dan have had an opportunity to speak with the team. So a lot to break down there. Jenna Fryer, uh, I keep mentioning her because she's kind of been at the forefront of this so far today. She says she's been chasing the story since Portland, uh, essentially since the IndyCar round at Portland. Sportico is the first one that ran it. And in that statement right there, the name Dan Towers is brought up. If you're not familiar with Dan Towers, his money is uh, Gamebridge. Group 1001, there's a lot of money there. He is already a co-owner in that Andretti Global team. He has been one of the, you know, uh, financial partners behind Andretti wanting to get to Formula One. There's a lot of money there. It's the same reason there's a lot of money going into Spire. Remember when I talked about Spire the other day saying that there's a lot of money going to that team when they want to be a tier one team within Chevy. They have that Gamebridge money behind them. They have Dan Towers, same guy. He's just out here trying to conquer American motorsports at this point. So uh, Dan Towers taking over the majority ownership of the team isn't necessarily a surprise, but seeing Michael Andretti stepping back is probably the bigger surprise uh, here. Of course, the team will continue to have his name, which isn't out of the ordinary, right? The Williams Racing F1 uh, name continues on, even though no Williams currently own that team any longer. It's like McDonald's, except Ray Kroc is the one that took them big or uh, or like McAfee uh, security on your computer if you're unfortunate enough to have that on there and the pop ups coming up every single time you log in just shut up I don't want it <laughs> anymore so I guess it's not out of the ordinary to see things like that happen but it is going to be weird to see Michael Andretti's team Andretti Global but not Michael Andretti at the helm any longer does this help their chances of getting into Formula One I'm sure that's going to be a topic that's you know, talked about, and he has been bombastic in his approach to getting into Formula One. He has been outspoken. He has been combative. He has been a guy that is not going to take no for an answer. And stepping back kind of feels like he maybe is relegated to taking that no, or does he feel like st stepping back will help that team be able to get across the finish line and into Formula One? Remains up in the air, but with Dan Towers coming up, but with Dan Towers coming on board, the power just went out. So we're going to continue to record this and then probably not be able to upload it. And now the power's back again. Shout out to Hurricane Helene. I don't live anywhere near the ocean, but man, is it windy and rainy and all the things that come along with that. And hopefully the power doesn't go back out <laughs> again real quick. So like I said, Andretti Global is no longer Michael Andretti's team. By the sounds of it, uh, expect an announcement in the coming weeks after they've been able to speak to the team. But unfortunately, the team already knows seems to be like now the worst kept secret like we knew when Stuart Haas Racing was closing down the doors and they still had an announcement to all their employees which they definitely owe it to them uh, but it's like oh the news is out here already it's not a surprise anymore Michael Andretti relinquishes his ownership of Andretti Global. NASCAR heads to Kansas this weekend for their second race of the season at the track in the heartland but it's actually in Kansas it's unlike the Kansas City Chiefs who are in Missouri uh, stolen valor there for the fine people of Kansas they deserve better like the racetrack that's 
30 minutes outside of the city, actually in Kansas. But back in the spring, if you remember, Kyle Larson, Chris Buescher, closest finish ever in NASCAR history, won one thousandths of a second. And the start finish line was crooked, to say the least. It looks like it was laid down by the cheapest bidder on the RFP uh, to lay down your lane lines on the highway. If you've driven 75 during those temporary lines and you kind of see them weaving like that, and that's because it went to the lowest bidder more than likely. And that's what the start finish line looked at, uh, looked like at Kansas and RFK racing after the race posted a picture of the start finish line. And you're like, yeah, it, it's not straight. It's definitely not straight whatsoever. Unfortunately, it doesn't really matter. The start finish line is there more of like a show. It's like a turkey on Thanksgiving. It's just there, uh, but it doesn't actually mean anything. And sorry if you like turkey on Thanksgiving, but man, it's maybe the worst meat choice we could possibly have. So instead of going back to Kansas in the fall with the start finish line still kind of looking a little wavy and people still wondering whether or not, you know, Chris Busch is the winner, it doesn't matter. The, the, the laser and what NASCAR uses to determine it, that determines the winner. They went ahead and painted a new start finish line. And I'll be honest, it is the straightest, most squared start finish line you're going to see in North America this season. They are making sure that nobody can question whether or not that is a straight line from the from the infield grass all the way up to the wall. It is 100% straight. It is square to the racetrack, square to pit road. It, there are no questions around whether or not this is a, um, a straight start finish line or not. They're not about to deal with the, the backlash of that from the NASCAR fans that I guess didn't realize that the laser is what is actually a start finish line there where the timing line is. It's not in photo finish, sure, but it has to be the photo of where NASCAR determines that laser line to be at. Uh, so hopefully this helps clear things up, but I did find it funny that they went ahead and completely put down a new start finish line, changed the design, changed everything to make sure that it is very straight there on the straight and narrow. No questions asked about it this time around. I got bored today, so I decided to rank all of the remaining NASCAR Cup Series drivers that are left in the playoffs and starting off whether or not they're a contender all the way down to Oh yeah, they're still here somehow. So starting off at the top with our contenders, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell. Those are the two guys right now I think that you can probably pencil into that final four race in Phoenix. Kyle Larson, of course, coming off a win at the Bristol night race, going into Kansas where he's won two of the last five, I believe, or two of the last six uh, races there. Has not finished outside the top 10 in his last six starts there. Has five top fives as well. And then he heads down to Talladega. Let's be honest, he's probably not going to make it out of Talladega. Then he goes on to the Roval, where he has won at the Roval, but has not won there in the Gen 7 car. But I still consider Kyle Larson a contender because he has a ton of playoff points up to now. Chris Rebell, on the other hand, also has a ton of playoff points, sits second in the points. And as long as he just has a consistent second round here, yeah, he's moving on to the third round. That sets up really nicely for him. Expect him to be in Phoenix. Those are our contenders at the moment could be contenders. That comes down to Tyler Reddick, who had a great summer month, but has looked uh, questionable now in the playoffs. We're now heading into Kansas, where he should perform very well out. He has a win there. And then he goes on to Talladega, won there in the spring, and then goes over to the Roval, has been really competent on road courses. He is definitely a contender, should be a contender, could be a contender. That's why he's in this category. If he wins in one of this, in, you know, one of these three races in the second round, that probably elevates him up to contender. Also in the could-be contenders category, you have Ryan Blaney coming off a championship last season. He's a guy that just seems to rise to the occasion now in the playoffs. Now, I will say, this round doesn't set up incredibly well for him, but Talladega is in this round, and Ryan Blaney at Talladega is very, very good. Chase Elliott also makes it into the could-be contenders. They are missing probably like a half a mile an hour, in my opinion, compared to like what the five car has. If they can just find that, and move their consistency up just a little bit, yeah, he's definitely a contender. And it sets up nicely. He has, He's done really well at Kansas. He's won at Talladega. He's won at the Roval. This round sets up nicely for Chase Elliott. Can he capitalize on that? Now, and then in the could-be contender, but Denny Hamlin category, we have... 
Denny Hamlin because he could be a contender, but he is in fact Denny Hamlin and we'll find a way to make sure he does not win a championship this year. He will once again exit Phoenix at the end of the season watching somebody else on stage holding the trophy that he so desperately covets, but everything seems to never go his way. Whether that's having a steering failure at Homestead, bouncing off the wall, getting taken out by somebody, spending himself out, engine failure, engine penalty, uh, literally anything and everything that could happen to Denny Hamlin likely happens to him, so he could be a contender Unfortunately, he can't because he's Denny Hamlin. In the sleeping but could be good category, we have William Byron, who started off the season incredibly hot. I mean, at the beginning of the season, when he picked up his first three wins, he was on pace to have like 12 wins a season if he continued on at that clip. Since that time, they have absolutely gone to sleep. They went into hibernation like a bear in the wintertime, and you hope they come back out every spring like big behemoth guy that, you know, is over in Yellowstone, can't remember his name, would help out for it if I could. Uh, yeah, they just haven't woken back up yet but if somebody wants to go poke them light a fire under their ass maybe wake them back up they could definitely be contenders but for now they need to do a little bit more because i haven't seen a lot out of them in the threaten him with spire every year category we have Alex Bowman. Turns out if you just threaten Alex Bowman with getting demoted down to the number seven car at Spire, he goes lights out and scores the third most amount of points in the first round. Set himself up very nicely. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the playoff points to uh, keep him out of that elimination zone once the points reset, but it does set up nicely in this round for him. Kansas should be pretty good. Hendrick Cars always has speed there. Talladega, very much up in the air. He hasn't won a super speedway race, but of course he did finish second the Daytona 500. He did win that iRacing uh, NASCAR Invitational during COVID on uh, at Talladega so there's that going for him and then of course the Roval where he does have top five finishes and already won on a road course this year so Alex Bowman uh hey threaten him every year he's going to rise to the occasion there are two drivers that just won't go away every single year they kind of seem to now just hang out that would be Joey Logano. He won't go away, and it is an even number year, which means that he should make it to the final four, but I just don't see the speed out of him. However, he's going to continue to be a pain in everyone's side, along with Chase Briscoe. When Chase Briscoe gets in the playoffs, he has generally no business being in the playoffs, and we're being completely honest here. But when he gets into the playoffs, that team just rises to the occasion. They take risks on pit strategy. They put themselves in contention at the end to get a good finish and maximize their points day. And there are times where you're watching them, they're running, I don't know, 27th to 33rd. And you're like, okay, they're done. And then at the end of the race, they finish P7. And you're like, how did they rebound from this? They will not go away. They always find a way to continue to be that thorn in everyone's side. And when we get to the Roval in a couple of weeks, I fully expect them to be in contention to try to get out of that elimination zone. Uh, and hopefully maybe they don't say something stupid over the radio like, hey, drop back so that the 14 car can get points here because uh, he needs to transfer. Yeah. And NASCAR has to you know, hit him with a penalty. Don't say anything stupid like that on the radio. But I expect him to be in contention to transfer, but I still don't think he will. And then in the how did they survive category, you have Austin Cindric and Daniel Suarez, two guys who I don't think anybody thought would transfer out of the first round, except for Martin Trex Jr. and Ty Gibbs just had abysmal first rounds and eliminated themselves. For those two guys, Daniel Suarez, uh, he's still staying alive staying alive at this point. He came very close last week at Bristol to making sure that he didn't transfer, but Ty Gibbs had a worse race than him. So he, you know, survived to live another day, he finished four laps down, still advanced on. Um, he has that win at Atlanta to fall back on. Could he get a win at Talladega? He absolutely could, but I don't think that his championship hopes continue on after the second round. And same with Austin Sendrick, right? He won at Gateway earlier in the year, uh, had a good car all day, capitalized when Christopher Bell and Ryan Blaney had issues, had great stage points at Atlanta earlier uh, in the first round. Could he do the same thing at Talladega? Absolutely. He could really maximize his points and help his day out, but... I don't see him having that much speed at Kansas. Taldega is a crapshoot. And for a road course guy on road courses, he's been pretty mediocre at this point. So I don't think he advances on. I will update these after each week. I'll post them to Twitter as well. So let me know in the comments what you think about Michael Andretti being out as owner at Andretti Auto Sport, Kansas getting a new start finish line, as well as my rankings here. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.
Today's video is sponsored by Lockdown Brand. Head over to LockdownBrand.com today for your motorsports-inspired apparel. Their shirts are absolutely phenomenal. Their hats equally as great. Use code BREAKHARD10 at checkout to save 10%. Also, do not forget that there is now a BREAKHARD blog as well. I'm posting about two to three times a week. I will have my Monday morning cool-down lap out on Monday morning. So go ahead and sign up. You have it delivered to your inbox by clicking the link that is down in the description below.